Hello everyone. Hopefully we've got quite a few people already turning up in the chat. Uh, hopefully people can hear me loud and clear and can hear this uh, new uh, tool we're going to be using for today. Okay, that'll do. Just to test the waters with sound. How's everyone doing? Uh, where's people tuning in from? All that usual sort of thing. It's great to be back. Great to see everyone. I hope that everyone's having a good start to the week. Um, I have no idea how difficult it is to run two computers. I use one for monitoring and one for actually running the stream. Um, let's go and have a look uh, at our... Who's here then? Um, I did notice that... Uh, I did notice that William Beckham and Drunk Bishop were here about 20 minutes ago. So some awesome commitment from you two, I must say. I think you're here. And let music your life. There's like... I could count on one hand, like some people who just seem to turn up without filter. Most definitely this stream every week. And pretty sure they turn up to the other ones as well. So some very faithful fans. So hello, uh, William Beckham, Drunk Bishop, Let Music Your Life, Anthony Grau, Dominic. Um, yes, What? so basically the concept behind today's stream is somewhat targeted, um, more so I'd say at an intermediate sort of um, person who is looking at sound design. So we're not going to be building our own patches um, and we are going to be actually looking uh, um, presets that you could buy, for example, from the ADSR store, but then maybe tweak them to fit, because not every time. It's a bit like anyone who edits photos, you might download presets for Lightroom, apply them to your photo, and they just need a little bit of tweaking to make them fit right for that photo. So we're going to be using some new tools today. If we have time, I'm going to dig into um, some of this stuff like Serum and my pull up pigments, or if anyone else has any recommendations, I'll see what I have. Um, but we're going to be basically looking at how we can just make tweaks to primarily bass sounds. If we have time, we might move on to pads. And I'm going to create a, a small loop to begin with and then dive into the presets that are here in phase plan. We've had a lot of requests from um, people wanting to look at phase plan. And um, I'm quite new to it, but it's a great workflow. I love the whole generator, modulator, and lane layout. And it's, it's extremely versatile. Um, I feel like Serum is just a fantastic tool if you want to just... Um, always have a good understanding of what's going on because it's so well laid out. And then Pigments pushes that a bit further with a lot of its new features, like the granular and the yeah, dual filters. And then Faceplant is like another, uh, that pushed further again. This thing is basically limitless until your computer craps out, essentially. Um, and it's capable of really, um, really complex routing chains. We looked at FM, I think that was last week, but Faceplant is more than capable of doing FM. Uh, let me have a look then. Da, 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 da. Uh, let's, I'm just checking you guys in the comments. Um, people using Serum and Ableton. I like the use. Uh, I like the Ableton one. I, obviously, I'm using Studio One, but I've had a little bit of time. That's cool. Massive. Yeah, I actually probably use the old Massive more than the new one. Hello, Simple Sam, another loyal follower. I recognize that name. Fabful of One, yeah, really, really cool, really simple and really flexible. Um, and, and like you say, it's just, I think it's just like two oscillators on that, maybe. I think. Um, hello um, to, oh, I was going to say William Beckham, but I think he's just in hello again there. Um, Virginia Beach. Oh, wow. Okay, that is a nice location, huh? Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, dissecting presets is a really great learning tool. I can definitely confirm that. Um, and yeah, vital. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, something about right. I want to try and get this sorted before we started. Someone's saying something about the mic audio. Two seconds. Um, I just want to get this sorted in this first sort of five. Let's see if we can. Da, 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 da. I don't know why that happens. 
might need a tech guru to run me through uh, a stream tech guru for if this happens again. Um, two seconds, guys, and then we'll get rolling. Um, I'm wondering why the mic is uh, having issues. Uh, I'm just checking my routing for my uh, my sound card. One, two, one, two. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, yeah, it's like a, I can't hear it myself, but I watched the one from last week and it was, um, I thought I had fixed it, so I'll not spend too much time on it, but it'd be good if we could get it uh, so it's at least audible for the purposes of this. I did have another idea the other day. Which was, I could do this temporarily. One, two, one, two, okay. Uh, hello, one, two. Does the, is the audio any better there for anyone? Just out of curiosity. And then we'll, we'll have to get rolling. Um... If uh, if anyone lets could let me know that'd be awesome. But anyone any feedback on the mic, and then we'll get we'll get a moving. I know we can still hear. We can still hear this nice and clear. The the actual sits are definitely fine. One two one two. So people hear me fine, but it's a bit glitchy. It is annoying though, to say the least. Um, do one last thing. Shit, is that's annoying. Ugh. One, two. Okay. I guess. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's a streaming thing, but it's stranger, it's two weeks in a row. It bugs me. Um, yeah, it's di it is a digital sort of clip sound, isn't it? Um, okay, so uh, I just saying that's not it's okay on Twitch. I know Twitch is a much higher bandwidth, so it could possibly be a streaming thing um, on YouTube and Facebook because they downgrade it. But anyway. It'll do, guys. Let's get on with the show. I appreciate the patience. So, um, if you are an absolute sound design god, I would say that um, maybe this one might have some stuff for you, but I would say it's more for the intermediate synthesis. And, uh, yeah, primary synths, because we're looking at presets here. I know that all of you got presets. They come with the plugins that you buy and we get third party ones all the time to try and keep our sounds inspired and um and it's just a good source of inspiration you know to keep us interested uh, so what we shall do is we shall just create something i'm going to create a really really basic uh loop and i'm using that just to sort of demonstrate um the the concept behind this um Okay, let's just create something, a loop. Okay, um, I'm just going to create a really basic loop and use it, like I said, to primarily focus on looking at the bass presets. It was 808 day yesterday, so we're going to be mainly focused on bass presets. If we have any more time, we can expand. Um, but this is about reverse engineering presets. I'm going to be diving into phase plan primarily, and it's a great way to learn synthesis and sound design. Um, it's all about when you are tweaking your presets, it's all about fitting them to the style of music that you're creating. Um, so that's what we, we have to bear in mind, essentially. Um, okay, I'm just going to pick a really, this is super, super simple, but I'm just going to pick a super simple, um, uh, really, really simple, um, 
kit sound. That'll do literally for today. Um, no, let's just loop this section. And I'm going to put a pad in. And, oh, I think this needs renewing. Um, okay, well, we'll stick with, uh, we'll stick with Phaseland for both of these. Oh, I still I need to update Serum on this Mac. This is my new uh, M1 laptop, so it hasn't got much um, equipment on it. So let's just stick with phase plan for the whole thing then, because we can't be diving into that. Um, okay, let's just quickly get one pad. Um, it's mainly about leads, but this will do the job. Keys. That'll do. Okay, just something really basic. Um, oh, face plant's quite hungry, isn't it? So this is part of the process of uh, selecting presets. Is you go through and you cycle through until the ear catches on to something. And you can tweak the presets as people are aware, but it's about what you tweak for each sound and why should you tweak certain things. Um, so, let me just record this part. That'll do. Okay, cool. Okay. And that is just the, um, we're going to use that primarily as just harmony. And now I'm going to put down the bass part and explore what the bass sound design, okay? Um, I'm going to duplicate this track and just get rid of this. Okay, and this is our loop that we have. I might even um, bounce this down just to keep it super simple. Okay, we can get rid of the metronome. Okay, let me just make sure that we are um, um, sounds still okay. Uh, Dressed as for next week. Um, okay, cool. So everyone's sounds okay for for today. That's fine. Okay, bass sounds. Let's go into uh, this. Is just by the way, none of these are like third party. Uh, these are what come with Vital. If you're interested in any of the sounds that I'm using today, um, I'm just gonna go into a bass sounds and uh, load up something completely random. I literally have no idea what I'm choosing. Let's start off with the most important part of selecting a preset, which is we basically want to find something that is compatible with the style of music we're producing. I know this sounds extremely obvious, but if you're um, producing, um, you know, I don't know, if you're producing house music, then you don't want to be using future bass or I suppose you could, you don't want to be using dubstep. A more extreme example, if you're, if you're doing something like house music, um, you don't want to be using um, like dubstep presets or something. You get, you get the idea. So you've got to think about what presets are going to work with your sound. Sometimes you can find this up by the title and the descriptions which are running through here, which is cool. But try and start off with something that sort of works because the, the thing with presets is, again, running back the analogy with the photos, is you might feel like they get you 90% of the way there. And that's great. I, I use presets a ton, even though I love to send them, design my own sounds. And I use them mainly for writing music because I want to be, you know, quick to get ideas done. So let me know, are you using presets more? Are you making your sounds more? Or would you say you are adapting sort of presets more? I, I find that it's better to um, use, uh, have a dedicated sound design session to build your own sounds. And then when you're writing, I wouldn't go into creating sounds while I'm writing because I just want to like focus on getting this stuff down so what i try and do is i get the sound as close as i can to begin with so this is sort of um not a bad patch a 
Okay. That's not bad. Straight away when I'm listening to it, it has character that I like. I like the shape of the sound. Um, and I think that the only thing that straight away stands out to me is this bass is more dominant than the actual... Um, it's more dominant than the actual chords. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's loads of songs where the bass is more prominent than the harmony. Um, and sometimes the, bra the bass is actually like the, the hook of the song. So it depends on the style and the elements. But for this, I just feel like the um, upper mids are just way too present. I want something that's in more of a, um, a low mids bass and maybe put it into an actual space. So in phase plan, this is the first time we've ever looked at it here. We're not using it to design our own sounds, like I said. It's all about adapting presets, but we basically have the generators, and then below that we have our modulators, and then we have our lanes. So generators is where we can create our oscillators, and you can use sample oscillators, you can use um, analog, you can use a uh, wavetable, and underneath there you have modulators. We also have the macros up top here, which is probably going to be a great place to start. So this is using some FS synthesis. We can see the waveform moving there, which is the cool thing about the flexibility of phase plan. So some of these are really, really cool uh, filters, uh, sorry, really cool macros. If we want a bit more control, we can obviously dial into our actual filter section here in the generators. Okay, that's definitely more fitting now, I think. Uh, let's check this out. Very strange. I appear to have lost my uh, the sound of this instrument. It shows that it's present, which is a bit unusual. Oh, streaming never really gets much easier in terms of the uh, complications. Try this again. Kilohertz. Phase plan. Yeah, okay, I have no idea what happened there. Um, we were on some sort of... Okay, we'll stick with this. Again, same principle of I wanted to adjust the cutoff. So straight when I'm doing that, um, I, I'm thinking about automating the cut off the filter. So the ways which you want to adapt a preset is think about the bass in layers. So we're primarily talking about the bass for the stream. Think about it in layers. So the, the layers of bass are the sub frequencies, sort of anywhere 80 or below or 100 and below. And then we have the main body of the bass. And then we also have um, the, the sort of pluck of the bass as well. So it depends on which elements of the bass that you need. So you've got to think about it in layers. Also, you can dive into what type of waveform. If you are thinking about um, using um, a more subby bass, stuff like sub bass, 808s, you probably want to be looking more at sine waves. So if we have a look at this preset, Home Junkie has used a square, here's our sine wave, our triangle, sawtooth, so it might be that you just need to change literally the sound of the wave to get the actual sound that you want. Let's have a listen. And I'm going to go back and turn the cutoff up a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to record the MIDI part in so we can just start changing the presets, okay? And back to this. Here we go. Okay, and I'm just going to quantize, okay, and let's go back to loop in this section, and, okay, so, 
this is just this first sound doom bass everything's a bit hot on the old gains okay so in terms of when you are changing the waveform you've got to ask yourself do you like the um, character of the sound so that is mainly determined the character and the sonics and mainly the harmonics of the sound you're going to want to look at waveform so like i said you want if you like the sound of this but for you it's a little bit sharp then maybe you want to change the waveform so let's explore that first and then you can look at time-based um things that you might want to change so we can see the analog waveforms here if we change these change them here to the triangle that's got a lot less upper harmonics and the sign will have even less the sign will be almost pure sub we have the distortion pulling out a lot more harmonics but that's quite different to the square isn't it I actually prefer the square so if you want to change the overall sound I would say start with your waveform then it could be that you maybe want to change the frequency range of the bass. So like I said, you might want to make it super subby. Just dial back your cutoff. Simple as that. You get a bit more complex stuff further along. It could be that you want to use a totally different filter. So rather than using a high pass or a low pass, you could use a notch or you use a band pass. Or you could use a foreign type of filter. Um, it really depends on the style and the genre and the taste. That's quite a cool sound. Okay, cool. Yep, that is really, really cool. I like that a lot. Um, now, let's leave the filter there. Another thing is, if you like the sound and you can further in terms of, okay, it feels like it's working with the style and I like the frequency range it's occupying. So we've talked about overall characteristic of the bass itself. Is it a really harmonically rich bass or is it a subby bass? And then you want to think about how the bass is occupying in terms of frequency region. Are you having one bass or two basses or three? Are you layering them? Third thing is, do you like the way the bass is sort of shaped? So this bass here, um, it, well, with phase plan, what happens is we can almost treat like an FM synth, like an operator. We can give them their own ADSRs for each individual analog actual engine. But if we come down to the main ADSR here, we have one for this uh, group, um, one for this other group. What we can do is we can shape it more. I think we could maybe increase the attack. Oh. Okay. So when the clap finishes the bass is still going on so what you would like to do is maybe change the sustain and the decay of the sound let's try this that's better okay great same thing with group two. So this is just another set of oscillators. I'm just going to change the actual, um, the ADS of the envelopes. So there. Try and make them all linear. Cool. And now once I've changed them to fit the groove, basically, I'm just going to bring the cut off a bit. Great, so layers, what type of waveform, the filter type, try different filter types as well as actually just changing the cut off and the resonance. And then it could be what about using um, a different sample as well. So in both groups here, we have analog and analog, analog and analog. So we have no samples going on, but we're going to dive into another reset in a minute and explore that and we're going to try and look at a range of different types uh, what about modulation so another thing is have a look at the modulation points without knowing it your patch might be evolving over time and you might want to change the actual 
basically the time-based manner in which it's doing that. So let's see what's currently modulating. We can see here we have modulation points with two LFOs and we have a randomizer as well. So these are controlling the level of one of the waveforms, pulse width, sync. We can just toggle these down here as well. How much does that change the sound? Wow. So we had a negative modulation point there. Wow. This really changes the sound. Cool. I'm going to add my own modulation point, which is something else you can do. I'm going to add the spread. on the distortion unit. And uh, we have a randomizer down here. And pitch, we'll leave these. Okay, and after we've looked at modulation, we've looked at envelopes, we could even change the LFO curve. So, that was actually in a bit of a ramp up, ramp down style. Let's see how the sound changes. Funny, these are set to scales, which is something I've never seen before in a synth. That's, uh, that's interesting. I'm sure you could have a lot of uh, freedom with that. Last thing I'd say is um, head over to the lane section in the actual. Um, in this in phase plan to maybe add some effects and stuff. Um, so let's have a look at this. What we have, uh, there's a fantastic effect actually um, in here called the disperser. I don't know if anyone's ever used this, but this is amazing. So it's a bit like a, a harmonic, a subharmonic gem generator, and it'll focus on the fundamental. If you can figure out what key it's in, that's excellent. So I know what key this is in. And then what it does is it basically boosts the amount of that frequency. It just makes the bass feel huge, but also tight without losing anything. Okay, and then the other thing I'd like to do is maybe just change the space that this is in, in terms of the reverb. So we'd like to make it a bigger size, and wider, a slightly longer decay. Reduce this size. change the color for me. Great. Cool sound, really cool. I'm tempted to keep on. Um, let's think about it. Something I thought would just, just to add some more width is some chorus and would be kind of cool actually. Let's try this out. Pull back on the, uh, the mix of reverb. And now once you get the end of your stage, you could go back and change one of the first things you change, which is the actual... I'm just going to change the waveform. So it's just a bit weaker that. Not as quite strong in terms of the harmonics and the fundamentals. Okay, we'll stick with the same chord progression, same loop. It's not about that, it's about the presets. Well, let's just have a listen to what this Doom bass sounded like uh, beforehand. So this is what we have. And this is where we started. 
So that clearly doesn't fit, does it? I think it's quite obvious. And even a beginner would be able to tell you that that's just not quite working. They might not be able to tell you why. But a simple process of a couple of minutes of changing the waveforms. In fact, I actually went back to the original waveforms. And that was probably the feature I liked about this preset. But also changing the cutoff and some of the modulation points and then just a little bit of the, the effects is a really cool way to uh, change the preset sound. Let's have a look at what else we have in here. Um, is this global volume stay locked? Okay, this is a good example actually. So, another huge thing. We were talking about layering subs, you have your body, you've got the pluck on a lot of bases. The good thing about these is sometimes you have to load up multiple instances of a synth or a sample. But here, because you have the group capabilities inside a phase plant, we can basically layer them with the um, within the engine itself. So we don't have to go out and have different um, channels and mixing routes. Rowing. We can do it all here. But what about the range of the instruments? So something clearly wrong with this preset. It's just not occupying the right range in terms of the actual um, track on the keyboard. So we just need to pitch it down, really. So what we can do is we can come to our waveforms and we could do it like that, or we could pitch the MIDI information down. Um, it just depends on how you want to work it. So we have semis and cents. I might try putting this down 12. Okay. I think we should change it. So one of them has a characteristic that I'm not loving. I think it's a, it sounds like a sample maybe. We've got an analog engine, analog engine. Got a bit of modulation going on here. Ah, this noise layer, I think I'm not enjoying. Yeah, we go. So that quickly went from a completely different, almost like, it's a very Moogie type style. Yeah, look, analog Moog style bass. I wasn't enjoying the noise oscillator there. Um, and I've changed the waveforms to a, a sine wave. I could probably ditch a couple of those analog engines now. But there's a good way to just get to like a fundamental sine wave sort of sound. Really basic. I'm sure everyone's heard this. Whether you know how to get there from an existing preset. Yeah, cool sound. Let's keep going through. Oh, crikey. See, this is more of a lead. So this is using a actual sample uh, a sample engine, a wavetable engine, and again, I would just say let's just pitch everything down because that was crazy high. Okay, cool. This one's a bit of a different sort of bass. Uh, let's go into the attack. This has got modulator on it, and in this case, it is. Um, ah, I think we're getting modulation from um, the other the wavetable so this is some of the fm capabilities that you can um do within uh phase plan okay so one of these oscillators is just a bit prominent center lane two so we can control the routing which is great i'm going to drop this one down 12 as well And let's do a global drop now that they're both down there. See if that makes better. Yeah, totally different sound. I think mainly what we need to do here is shaping of the envelope. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this modulator altogether. Short and sustained. Okay, I can hear some sort of reverb. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. It needs some, but the decay is way too long. So, what I did there was I just shaped the envelope of each sound, which is basically how the, t the sound evolves over time. And then I really didn't like the reverb. I could hear the way it was just such a long decay, which is quite unnecessary on a bass sound. 
Something we can also do is this dampen control here is basically filtering at the low end, I believe. Um, this is controlling the early reflections. If you want to put it in a space where it's going to react at a later rate, you can increase the early value. But sometimes you don't have to change the world on these presets. You know, you just have to maybe, again, at the heart of all these presets is probably the um, waveform it's using or the sample. And then it's all about how you shape them over time. But that's uh, that's quite a cool sound. Let's hear this. Yeah, uh, not my favourite one, but kind of cool. Uh, this is an FM patch, okay, so we'll probably have a little bit more um, of an industrial sound, as we've been told. Okay, I mean, that is very, it's hitting that quite hard on the compression. Let's pull this down. I actually really think this is a cool sound. First thing I thought when I heard this was, don't like the delay. Um, quite like the uh, waveform. Let's just, uh, again, I think all these sounds, maybe I should uh, drop the octave down of the MIDI part rather than tuning down every single patch, but uh, let's have a look. Mm. That's a cool sound, I like this, okay. Um, I think what I might do is go over the sawtooth, uh, triangle. I think we need a shorter release time on the compressor. Uh, the, the compressor is holding on the notes, and when it releases, it's got a slow release, meaning um, it, it doesn't bring it back to zero straight away, the value it originally is at. It's taking quite a while, basically. Um, and it's holding on the notes while it's mainly the ASR, but all to the compression. It's all stacking up. Okay, that's nearly there. It's just the... And let's have a look at the ADSR. This group has one collective ADSR for the whole, uh, for Analog Engine 1 and Analog Engine 2. Um, yeah, that's quite cool. Uh, we also have this envelope down here, which is assigned to a couple of mod points. Yeah, quite cool. I think people are getting the gist now. So in terms of things you can do straight away is you want to ask yourself, uh, what genre are you, state your intentions in terms of what type of music am I trying to create here? And what is conventional in this sort of style of music? There's nothing wrong with breaking barriers and, and doing things that aren't absolutely correct. Um, but what we want to do is you want to think about um, maybe getting the sound at the start close enough. And then you can look at the layers of the bass range and the actual range of the waveform. So have you noticed I've, I've pitched down quite a few times? What type of waveform you're using? We have a sound design session on the sound design session playlist, which talks about um, the type of waveforms and which ones you should use and why. I'll not really go into depth here, but there's a good explanation as to why you want to use which one. So maybe think about what waveform you want to use. And then you want to look at the filter types as well. This does make a really, really big difference um, over the, the overall sound. Um, let's have a play with the filter here. And then after you've done that, you want to look at your time shape and values. So things like mainly your master, your VCA, which is your VCA and look your voltage control amplifier, you maybe your VCF, voltage control filter, um, also stuff like LFOs that are doing the modulating. Are they modulating things over time? You might want to change the division or the rate of the LFO. Let's see if we can find a patch like that. So I call it LFO. Not, not quite what I'm looking for. OK, 
okay, yeah, this will do, this will do. Um, again, I'm gonna quite, I should have maybe played the MIDI region at an octave 12 semis lower. This is a cool patch. So, um, ignoring this stuff about the waveforms and the cutoff here, I'm primar primarily looking at the LFOs. So the LFOs are low frequency on off oscillator, crikey. And it makes things move and vibrate through time, basically. And I've changed the rate here, sped it up with this global control, um, but I would like to affect the macro more. So macro 3 FM depth. <laughs> So basically, um, macros are up here. We can see that basically this has been assigned up here so we can have a global control over it. Better for modulating. Okay, I'm gonna change the uh, filter. This is interesting. This transient's given it a lot of work. I think what I, the only thing I don't like is the, about this one is it's just a bit steep on um, the attack. Let's try this. It's better. Really cool little sub octave here as well. Okay, I actually think this one would benefit from a bigger space. So again, you could do this with third party, or you could do it here. Um, I'm just going to pull this decay. Get rid of this modulation. So you hear the tail there a bit more, just kind of... That's cool, I'm enjoying that. Okay. Let's turn this engine off. So this sine wave is doing all the sub-octave that we brought up in the macro, so the sub is probably occupying the region of about 50. You may not hear it if you're using good headphones or watching on like a phone. But that's um, really adding a lot to the sound, but uh, the analog one is uh, the engine that's getting the FO applied to it. I think what I'll do with that is I'll add a unison and increase the voices and the spread. So this is something you can, to, you can uh, do to a preset to change its sound in the stereo field. <laughs> That's really cool. I love that. This is a cool patch. I like this a lot. Bring this up back in. And again, let's hear it and let's see where we came from. So this is here's the base two. Okay, and the patch was this. So never in a million years would that have worked. You put that on a song, not only is it never gonna get any airplay or land anything notable, you're not gonna win any awards with it. It's just not gonna it's gonna collapse in on itself when you are trying to fulfill the production. So what I mean by that is when you start adding other parts, for example, like your leads and stuff, you, it's just going to fall apart because this is not occupying the right range, it's not occupying the right frequency spectrum, and you can quickly make these tweaks. So the reason I like to mainly work with the preset and adapt it is when I'm composing and when I'm writing. I, like I said, I might have a dedicated sound design session where I make my own patches for certain synth, and that'll do me, and then I'll, I'll tweak them. So the reason to tweak presets is dependent on what you're creating. If I'm doing something future bass and I have a preset that I created primarily um, for funk music, I can tweak it to suit the needs of that preset. So I think pretty much everyone, regardless of your level, is tweaking their presets. Um, if not, I think maybe you're not confident in doing it. And it's such a simple thing to do. You've got to think about your main engines, and the sound over time, and the ranges. So that's really all there is to think about. Um, 
let's have a look at one more and then um i haven't those questions coming in um in fact what i can do is i think we've done a couple of base sounds now i think what i'll do is um i'll i'll move on to one pad sound um, and i'll move i'll get rid of this and I'll quickly make this bass. Uh, actually, there's some cool basses in here as well, by the way. Um, That's a cool sound. Quite different than what we've done before. Um, I'm just going to pitch it because I'm trying to look at primarily um, the uh, pad just for the end of the string. Oh, quick. That's quite cool. It just needs a bit of filter. So we have a lot. It's opening a lot on the envelope there, as you see. Oh, that's a brilliant sound. I love that. There's two things I changed. Two things. Okay. And let's go back to this. And let's have a look at face plant. A couple of pads. Pads, let's have a look. 70 string machine. Oh, wow. So start off with something that maybe gets you inspired. Oh, wow. Here was cool. Just looking. Okay, this is a good example. Sort of a traditional sound. Let's check this out. So uh, what I don't like about this sound is quite a few things, but I know from listening to it, it works in terms of its voices, its polyphony, and I know I can shape it quite quickly to get it where I want it to finish this off and go check your questions. I don't like the waveform. The sine wave can sound quite cool, a lot less harsh. To me, that sound is just hurting my ears, and that's a bad sign. Um, it's got a lot of resonance on this Q, so the Q is like your resonance value, and it's peaking there. So it's changed quite a bit there. I'm going to change the filter. And let's put the, let's see, this is on minus 12. We need to change this. And it's got an incredibly long sustain, which is just... And the attack's quite... It's quite good. I'll just back it up a little bit. Okay. Um, I think what I would do is... Increase the voices here. And more spread. It's quite cool. What else we got going on here in the lanes? Get rid of that comb filter. I think the rest is fine. Uh, and analog, let's turn this engine off. Okay, so this is receiving information from um, So I changed the sign at the start, but I feel like I've just lost a little bit of the 
a little bit of the upper harmonics, which was trying to bring back, but wasn't quite getting that sort of effect. Uh, let's try this sound now. Okay, still ever so slightly longer the sustain. We do have some global controls up here as well, just to make your life a bit easier if you don't want to delve right in the engine. We could use it like a bed. That's cool. So I like it now. And again, it was just a couple of moves. That's cool. And we started from this yeah really uh, it sort of hurts your ears not about preset at all it just doesn't work in context so it's all about thinking does this fit what i'm trying to achieve okay um let me come back um, and check some of your comments i'd seen something before um uh, da, 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 da. so adam masnev was the first one let me have a look adam what your question was um, let me show us some LFO techniques. Okay, Adam, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so we have a couple of LFOs down here. Um, I'll, I'll think, is, is it possible to just get an initial patch, the most basic sort of sound? Uh, factory initial patch. This will do. Okay, if I get a generator, which is just a an oscillator so so lfo we're using to modulate the most common th technique with an lfo is we'll use it to modulate a cutoff let me get an lfo and uh, let me add um let me think i'm trying to think maybe a pad would be better to demonstrate this on Yeah, I think I'll, I'll just just for the sake of sticking with the preset thing, let me just pick a, a part. Seventy string machine. This is about to have an LFO modulating the um, filter section here. So you can already see that there's something going on here. Um, let's get rid of them and start with our own. So what we could do is we'll add back in the LFO. And this is our uh, rate here. And we can control this via a hertz region, see it speeding up, or I believe you can do it in divisions as well. So this is basically four over 16, which are um, semi-quavers. Um, quavers would be eight. That's more music theory knowledge, um, but you can just mess around with it. And I believe you also get presets in here, which is cool. But what you want to do is you want to apply um, the LFO to a mod point, the most conventional thing being cut off of filters we can see already so that's true that's probably the most common use of lfo is to modulate um cut off over time so it's basically opening and closing the filter there can get way more in depth um but i would say start there try different shapes for your lfos pigments is great at this serum's great at this um yeah try different shapes and try different rates watch what happens if i increase the the value so now it'll be a quicker open and close of the filler yeah hope that answers your question um da, 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 okay um Yes, Pigment is a little bit hungry on the old CPU. That's great, William, that you're learning from myself and Tetro. Yeah, move to the M1. It's awesome. It's really, really good. Creating more, more sounds is fun, but not as effective in creating actual music. Uh, yeah, I get what you mean there. A simple salmon response. Just like I said, I think it's cool to uh, use, your, um, use your presets 
in a compositional or a writing stage and tweak as you go. But if you're designing sounds, that's not going to be inspiration for actually like writing parts, you know, like harmony or melodic lines and stuff like that. And then you shape them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, let music your life. I find presets are useful and are right. Yeah, I would always recommend having presets because you get. The thing is, if you're a one-man band, you're producing your own music, you're doing your own sound design, you're mixing, you're mastering, at some point you're going to stumble. So that's when it can come in handy to just pick up a pack on a good discount and use those presets in your music. Um, someone saying they loved that one before that we had issue with phase plan. Um, many people use phase plan for neural based design. Well, I'd have to listen. Um, that was a sawtooth, I believe, at the start. Um, Automating filter on the preset. I can't quite remember what it was, but yeah. Um, yeah, the spread modulation. I'm just looking for any questions here. I haven't used Falcon yet, no. Yeah, the snapping system of the Kilohertz plugin is great, and I think they have that across all of their plugins, which is really cool. Um, if you feel like even this is a little bit too far-fetched, I would recommend that number one, you go back and just learn sound design basics about different types of waveforms, filters, ADSR, envelope, LFOs and effects. There is a stream dedicated to that from a couple of months back. And then if you really just want to get into it and you can't be able to watch that, just use the uh, macros up here. So if everything I was doing, the macros are like a simplified global control of um, those presets they're also really good if you have something like i've got an arturia key lab here be good to use that live and maybe um, map them to some of the rotary encoders the, the macros yeah snap heap uh, snap heap is really really cool isn't it that's a great sound design tool um you shift the phase starting point yeah that would have been cool that's what fm's cool for as well if we were using the um group or the engine to modulate another engine we can change the output source on the bottom of the engine um send to on the output here so it's very like fm in the way you get your own envelope um to shape each waveform which is cool thank you lush um um, yeah, face plant's awesome. I think it's starting to get a lot more exposure and stuff. Kilohertz are doing some really, really cool stuff. If you haven't been aware of it, a couple of people are saying they haven't. I guess it's just it's uh, it's more powerful than any of the VST for for certain. Um, a little bit less user friendly than pigments, if I had to say. So I would suggest if you're ever going to pick up resets, it would probably be for face plant, and then you can tweak them. Um, Just looking at your comments. Yeah, it, it is very deep. Um, micro Freak is the one on top. Someone asking, yeah, it's a Micro Freak here. Um, yeah, you're right. On the bottom is, uh, it's an Arturia, then Arp Odyssey, then it's a Modal, and then Micro Freak. Multi, I want a multi-band modulation tool. How, you, how multi-band work? Anyone with a good multi-band modulation that lets you apply mods to specific bands only? Um, I think I think um, you can use face plant in a multi-band way. Depends if you mean mixing or synthesis. Though. I'm not sure quite what you mean. Tricomp is the studio one. Um, sort of um, g style compressor, I believe, Marcos, which is cool. I haven't used it a ton, actually. Um, quickly coming down to these cons. Um, yeah, Saucy 808. That's a really cool plugin. I think it's on discount as well at the minute on the website. Um, here's a 
we are too busy to use the plugins we have to live through brand new guys to see the fun. Um, cool. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I got lost for a second there. Um, I think next week we, well, next week one thing's for sure is we're definitely going to have to, uh, apologies for this mic situation. I don't know if it's actually an inner issue or if it's um, an issue in the software, we'll get it sorted out. Thanks for to tuning in this week, guys. Uh, we've got some cool ideas for future streams with some more advanced sound design, maybe moving away from using synths or less so. Uh, but next week, we might have a, a fun one planned. We'll have to see. Um, as always, if you enjoyed this, thumbs up and subscribe. Be notified for the live streams that happen throughout the week with myself and the other ADSR instructors. Um, if you love Ida, like people seem to be saying in the comments, join the Discord server because she seems to be on that thing 24 7. Um, and yeah, I hope you all have a great week. Hopefully, this has been useful and people have took something away in terms of how they can shape their presets. You don't always have to start from the ground up, you can transform something to make it suit your project. I hope this has helped, guys, and I will see you next week. Any questions, just holler on the Discord, or I sometimes come back and check these as well. Okay, I'll catch you next week, guys. Signing out.